Today's video, granted, is very stupid, but I was genuinely surprised by the results. So let's see what happens when you use a GT1030 heatsink to try and cool a CPU. This whole process started a couple days ago when I just couldn't think of a video idea. So in complete desperation, I went onto the suggestion box channel on my Discord server. And after reading through a couple of pretty terrible ideas, I found one that got me very excited. What would happen if you mount a GPU cooler to a CPU? It often happens the other way around, but considering the chonky coolers on GPUs, the thermals should be pretty good. I, I really wanted to try this out and I thought it was a great idea, but right after that, someone posted a link to a video and said that this has already been done before. I watched the video and I was genuinely impressed by the amount of effort that this man put into this process. He manufactured mounting hardware and he did all kinds of exciting stuff to get this GPU cooler mounted to the CPU. You, you really should go watch this video. It's amazing how much time he put into it. I'll have it linked in the description below. But while watching this, I couldn't help but think to myself, this is way too much effort. All you need to do is zip tie one bitch to another bitch and then you're good. So I decided I'm just gonna do like a ghetto version of that and see if it works as well. After this, I laid a bunch of graphics cards with big heat sinks out on a table to try and decide which one to use. And in the process, as a joke, I added a GT1030 to the pile to just be like, oh, obviously this is the one that you should use because it's such a monster GPU. But after tearing all of these cards down to try and match GPU cooler mounting to CPU socket mounting and whatever, I kept looking back at the little hunk of crap heatsink on the GT1030 and it was just too stupid an idea to not do. Like I, I owed it to myself and I owed it to all of you to see if you can cool a CPU with a GT1030 heatsink. Now using this powerful GT1030 heatsink does pose a couple of issues. Um, initially I wanted to use this, which is a 7700K. But the problem is, you can see on the base of the cooler here, you have these little standoffs, right? So if you try and place it down on the cooler, I've got some thermal paste on there so that we can see if contact's made. You can see that it's very loose and you lift it off and no contact's been made. Now I could actually just cut these down, but they're making contact with the actual sockets around. And AMD's socket doesn't have that bit of metal around it. So I'm just gonna use an AMD CPU and then we don't possibly need to worry about these. And then the other issue we have is this little fan connector. That is not a four pin PWM connector. So we're gonna have to cut it off and then splice a different connector on there so that we can just plug it into the motherboard and then use this fan. So hopefully with the Ryzen CPU, it's going to work, but it looks like it should just kind of. Oh, that's so annoying. It's so close. I just had a closer look at these and maybe I can just screw them out. Like they look like they're just mounted in here. So I'm going to see if I can get around having to like Dremel them off. Yeah, I mean, I even tried to savage them out with my pure manpower and I couldn't get it out. So I think dremeling may be, may be my best option. Look at how tiny the margins are with which it doesn't fit. It's so annoying. It's so close. I mean, I guess I could try mount it like this on the cooler and then see how that goes because it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, right? If I, if I just have it like sitting like that it means that the ihs isn't going to be completely covered it's so close like look at that it's most of it is covered yeah i think i'm just going to do it like that don't have to cut anything in the process of going to fetch the dremel from storage i actually found this motherboard which has like nothing around the socket and as you can see here you can actually drop this bad boy on there and there's nothing interfering so we can use this motherboard without having to do further modifications you can see there contacts being made. It's also going to be pretty easy to mount on here.
this is probably going to infuriate a lot of you, but I'm not entirely sure what the cables are. So this one with the three pin, I know which one's ground, but I'm kind of guessing that this is ground. Um, there is an indication on the bearing on the fan. There's like one of the cables is painted. So I'm assuming that's ground. Um, so yeah, let's, let's see what happens when we solder these together and then hope that I don't set my, my, my house on fire in the process. And remember kids, safety is sexy. So don't do this at home unless you're at least 45% sure what you're doing. I don't even know if I'm 45% sure, but it's fine. <laughs> Oh, and considering the fact that Gary's get real uppity about soldering work, I've decided to not show you my soldering so that you can't tell me I'm doing it wrong. Here we have a very professionally spliced GT1030 fan. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just make sure that this isn't a fire hazard and then we'll see if we can cool a 3200G with it. <laughs> Here I have some, some sacrificial components, so I'm going to start it up and see if this causes a small house fire. Oh, I actually think it is shorting. Now I'm pretty sure that I had the ground correct, uh, so I just swapped two of the cables around. So let's see what that's done. Yay, there we go. So we have a way to get the fan spinning. Now we can continue with our terrible idea. It's the moment of truth. We get to see if this terrible idea actually works. Uh, so I do have a fire cam set up for, <laughs> in case something catches on fire. Uh, but let's see, let's see how well this works. Okay, there we go. We've got the fan spinning. Now I'm not a hundred percent sure if the BIOS on that's been updated to allow for... Oh, I really, really hope it's not a BIOS issue. Uh, I had to do several BIOS updates to, to get to the one that I need, but now it should work. I've tested the RAM, everything works. Uh, so this should be fine. Okay, there we go. We're sitting at 40, wait, wait, come back. We're sitting at 40 degrees Celsius with 1.4 volts, what? Now I've been installing software for a bit and we're sitting just under 60 degrees Celsius with it, you know, this reasonable utilization happening here. Uh, when it comes to the actual core frequency, it occasionally hits like 3.8 gigahertz and that's honestly way better than I was expecting. I mean, you can hear, like, it's not having a great time, but it's, it's kind of working. Look at that, it's working. We're gaming with a GT1030 heatsink on, on a 3200G, that's pretty crazy. Okay, we've popped into 80 degrees Celsius there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep gaming until it just kind of gives out. Uh, we're averaging at about 50, 50 frames per second here as well. So we can see, we'll be able to see the core frequency of the CPU and the GPU creep down as, as it starts hitting thermal, <laughs> thermal limits, which it's slowly starting to do. We're sitting at about 86C now. We're sitting at about 3.7 gigahertz on the CPU still, and we're still sitting at about 1.2 gigahertz on the, on the iGPU. We haven't really lost any frame rate yet. I've been driving for about six, seven minutes. I've officially made it around the map now, right? And we're still sitting at about between 95 and 96 C. Um, we get the occasional, ooh, is that a better car? There we go. I genuinely wasn't expecting this result. I was half expecting we could game for like two minutes and then we'd have silicon fusion happening. Um, but no. It's running very hot, but it's, it's working. 
it's it's still running you know it's barely throttling it's still running at basically the same frequency it was before and it's still at 95 to 96 degrees celsius so i think it's safe to say that we've oof ah! <laughs> i genuinely can't believe this actually worked that went way better than I was expecting. I know that it didn't go amazingly well, but I was just expecting everything to catch on fire. So apparently you can cool a mid-range APU with a GT1030 heatsink. Now with that, don't forget to go check out the Tech Lens video where he does a truly amazing job at mounting a GPU cooler to a CPU. He, he puts much more effort into it than I did. Um, yeah, and thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next one, bye-bye.